Hey everyone, hope you're having a good weekend. I decided to try to make a video for you. Um, I'd like to try to do this more often, where I solve a few problems from your homework. That way we can kind of uh, keep the course moving a little bit. Um, it gives you a little bit more resources at your fingertips, um, but you don't have to guess on the homework as much. So uh, this homework is the inverse trig functions. You gotta find the derivatives of those, and then you're finding equations of normal lines and tangent lines. So. Um, on my math lab. So let's just get right into it. One of the problems that we have to do, uh, this is like numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. They need you to find the derivative of this inverse uh, trig function, cosine, right? So let's write down our formula for cosine inverse, d dx, cosine inverse of x, or just remember what it is. You, you have your formula sheet, um, is negative u prime so I should say u here, over the square root of 1 minus u squared. Okay? Okay, so we know that this is all our u here. Maybe I use two different colors too. This is all our u here. And so we, we apply our derivative here. And then we get y prime is equal to, and then we get negative Okay, so what's the derivative of u? u prime is uh, 21x to the 6. Okay, so negative 21x to the 6 over the square root of 1 minus 3x to the 7th squared. Here's another thing you got to remember from algebra. When you square something, you're multiplying the power. So, 2 times 7 is going to be, I'm going to get a power of 14. So I just recopy everything. Square root of 1 minus. x to the uh, 7 squared is going to be x to the 14th. And then obviously 3 squared is 9. Okay? And then let's just leave it like that. Put that in. That was my question. Yours is going to be a little different, but that's the basic idea. you got to figure out u prime and then just plug in to use a formula. That, that's 1 through 4. Not too difficult. Okay? Let's look at um, number five for me. It says that I have x of t is equal to the sine inverse of t over eight. All right? And then it says figure out the velocity of the particle at t equals seven. So I want you to remember a concept of average versus instantaneous rate of change and um, notice that we're evaluating something right at a point. So we have this curve, the arc sine curve, which I can never draw correctly because it's really weird to me, but it's something like this, right? And then we have time. So this, this particle is moving and this curve describes where if you plug in, let's say, three seconds, then I know where it's going to be if I evaluate this function, right? But I know where it's going to be exactly at 7. If they gave me an interval, let's say, between 5 and 8 seconds, whatever, then they would ask me a question like, find the average velocity. If they just say, find the velocity at 7 seconds, you know you have to take a derivative because you're finding the rate of change at a particular point, which is this, the slope of the tangent line. Okay, so first thing you do is we just take the derivative. So the velocity is the derivative of the position function. So we have to use our formula. Arc sine is u prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared. So u prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared. So my u is t over 8. So u prime is equal to 1 over 8. So I have 1 over 8 over the square root of... 1 minus u squared, it's going to give me t squared over 64. Okay, you can work out the, the details if, if I'm skipping steps here, but just t squared is t squared and 8 squared is 64. So, Okay, so we found the derivative, um, but then we need to find it at, at 7, right? So this is the velocity. Velocity is equal to the derivative of, I didn't write this correctly, it should have been dx dt, uh, but whatever. Um, of of my position function. Velocity is a derivative of position function. So um, 
v of t is going to be 7 plugged into here. v of 7, I apologize. v of 7 is going to be 7 plugged into here. So it's 1 over 8 over the square root of 1 minus 49 over 64. Okay? Great. Um, I can move this 8 to the bottom, by the way, which I should have done already. So the square root of 1 minus... So let's do... Um, 64 minus 49 uh, over 64 over 64, just a common denominator. This is 1 over 8 times the square root of 64 minus 49. I'm ashamed, I'm using a calculator. 64 minus 49, 15. So 8 times the square root of 15 over 64. So you end up with 1 over 8 times the square root of 15. 15, sorry, over 8. This cancels, and I end up with 1 over the square root of 15. Okay? So that's an exact answer if they're asking for one. If not, you can round off. So that's how you find the velocity. So remember, velocity at a particular value, or instantaneous velocity, same thing, is the derivative of position. Average velocity, is they have to give you an interval, and they would say v average is going to be x of 8 minus x of 5 over 8 minus 5. This is like the slope formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, So average is the regular old slope formula from regular pre-algebra, algebra, whatever. And then instantaneous, meaning the tangent line at one point, is my derivative. Okay. All right, last thing. Our last couple things. Um, this is going to be number seven. It says, find the given point, find the lines that are tangent to this point on the curve. Okay, so this is number seven. So we have x squared plus xy minus y squared equals 11. And then they give you the point three comma two. So let's find the tangent line first, okay? Actually, let's find the derivative first. That's the first thing you got to do. So, let's do that. So we apply our derivative operator to both sides. d dx, d dx. Okay, well then, 0, right, of a number. This is 2x plus, and then this is a product rule, uv. So we're going to do a product. The derivative of u is 1 times y plus the derivative of v is y prime, so xy prime. And then minus, Mr. Rodriguez didn't live enough room, times y prime. Okay, 2y times y prime. We should be comfortable with that. Now we've got to get uh, y prime by itself. Or we could just plug in 3 comma 2. But you guys like to get y prime by itself. So we drop the parentheses, 2x plus y plus xy prime minus 2y times y prime equals 0. Okay, let's, um, I'm just going to go ahead and plug in, because it's my video. So this x is 3, so 2 times 3 is 6 plus 2 plus 3y prime minus 2y, which is 4, 4y prime equals 0, if I did that right. So, uh, let me just check that again. That's 6, 2, 3, and then 4. Yeah, okay, so this is just, uh, this is going to be 8. This is, so subtract 8 from both sides, I get negative 8, and then this is negative y prime. So y prime is equal to 8. Okay, so the derivative of my f function is at 3 comma 2 is 8. Okay, So this is the, I didn't even have to get y prime by itself. The, this is the slope specifically at 8. Okay, So this is the slope of my tangent line at 8. So to find the tangent line, I use y minus y0 equals m times x minus x0. Okay, and I have m, 
right here. So y minus 2, this is my y0, this is my x0. So y minus 2 is equal to 8 times x minus 3. And then get it, let's get it into slope intercept just in case they're asking for it. So this would be 8x minus 24 plus 2. So this is 8x minus 22. Okay? All right, normal line is very similar. You only have to do one more step. And that is your slope of your normal line is perpendicular to the slope of your tangent line. Or the, the line is perpendicular, so the slope is the opposite reciprocal, right? So I take this and I do negative 1 over 8, like, like I said in class. So again, using this formula, now I just have y minus 2 is equal to negative 1 over 8, x minus 3. And I solve for y. I get y is equal to negative x over 8 plus 3 over 8 plus 2, which simplifies to negative x over 8 plus uh, 16, 19? 19 over 8, I believe. Okay? So y equals this. That's my normal line. So that's the. these are the three types of problems that you're going to see in the homework. It's just you have several of them. So that should do. See you guys on Monday.